All right, Jack, you want to bring up the mics? You got it, Steve. You're all set. Okay. Ken is uh, live down in Texas. Yes, sir. Okay, we're good to go. Hi, Ken. <laughs> yeah, hi, Ken in Texas. Um, that's our IT man. Uh, welcome. I'm Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machine, and we have a, a terrific guest today, Rod Oranger from iRice Company. Uh, Rod has been in the flavor business since Moses parted the water. So oh if there's anything you want to know about uh, ice cream, ices, flavorings, uh, Rod has the knowledge. And that's why he's here today. iRice is a, a fantastic company. We're actually going to make mango ice. So mango, uh, we're going to use... Three, three ingredients to make this ice. Okay, this is the simplest way to make Italian ice. And uh, we're going to start with... Are you going to make the lemon ice later? I'm going to make the lemon ice later. Okay. I'm going to have you set the machine to where we, where we want it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with uh, one, and one gallon and one quart of water. It's funny Rod said that about the family business because I went and got my master's degree in arbitrage, which is the buying and selling of money. And I was all set to go to work for the banks, and then my father, with his wonderful ties up in New York, said, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. And he said, you come work for the family business, you'll work hard and long, we'll pay you very little money, and in the end you'll own the business. And I said, who's going to make an offer like that? So I, I took it. and. Uh, Dad worked until he was 93, but I think he'd be pretty surprised how big Emory Thompson is today. He, he never would have dreamed that it would go uh, from a small job shop up to uh, the largest manufacturer in the world. Yes, dads can be very persuasive. Okay, so we just added one gallon and one quart of water. We're going to add one quart, I'm sorry, a half gallon of sorbet base. So sorbet base is a stabilization system. Okay, it contains guar gum and... Uh, xanthan gum. Okay. There's also uh, sweeteners in here. Now, guar and xanthan Ho are two naturally, they're naturally occurring the gums, aren't they, Rod? They are natural gums, yes, correct. So the reason why this isn't just pouring in, it is a stabilizer, so there is some gelatinous goo going on here. Want me to turn the dash on for you? Sure. That might speed it up. Well, how about if we lift this thing? Do I need that? Oh, yeah. You don't have to use that. That's, that's for decoration. That's, that's a guard. It's guarding, all right. Yeah. I had a question on the stabilizer, on the um, sorbet sor base. Is that used for a lot of other flavors, or certain flavors only, or...? So you, you need to use a stabilizer in your Italian ices. Any sta um, I'm going to make products with three different types of stabilizers that we make. Well, you need a stabilizer in your ices for two reasons. One is it's going to hold the water in, in, uh, in, in the finished product so you won't get puddling. And also it'll, it'll give you that creaminess that you're looking for and scoopability. Okay? So Steve Thompson uh, is a purist, and uh, he doesn't necessarily use stabilizers in uh, a number of his recipes, uh, which is fine. If you want to make an, an ice that you're going to serve and scoop in one day, that's a great way to go, because then you're saving your money on your stabilization. Uh, but if you want to put a product in an ice cream cabinet and scoop it the same temperature as ice cream, or you want to hold it for a number of days, you need to use a stabilizer. We're going to add a half gallon of mango ice base. So mango uh, is the number one selling ice that we see out there. I Rice happens to make, well, arguably the best mango in the industry, whether it's for ice cream or Italian ice.
Now you can turn on the refrigeration. Now on the other side. Just so this oh, this side. Yeah. And we'll set a timer. This is the best mango that you can get. Uh, mangoes are hard to deal with. Uh, I can get mangoes up out of Miami once in a while, uh, but you can't run a business on once in a while. Uh, that, that just doesn't work. Um, because once you have a flavor, you have to have it. I remember, gosh, um, it's got to be when I was in my mid-20s and my kids were just starting to grow up, and I brought home some of Rod's Mango Italian Ice, and they heard the name mango, and they, they would rather eat frozen green beans right from the freezer, uncooked, than try that mango. They eventually broke down and tried it, and then, of course, now you, you couldn't keep it in the house because it is such a spectacular flavor. Question? Yeah, but all you have to do is, for the next size up, double the recipe, or for the smaller machine, cut it in half. It's really that simple. How long will it take to freeze? I set the timer for uh, 15 minutes. It could go a little longer, but what I want the timer for, and why, uh, and uh, I set the timer for 15 so that I can be doing other stuff. Uh, and then the bell goes off, and I go, oh, I know I got to get back to it. The Italian machines like to put uh, something I invented back in the early 70s, uh, as soon as I got out of college, and that's a, uh, a meter that measures the load on the motor and then shuts down the motor. So they say, oh great, we got an automatic product. The only problem is it's set to shut the machine off on vanilla ice cream, which is eight minutes, sometimes seven. So if you set their, they used to call it the heart o -matic, but I think they decided that was a little too risque, and they changed it to the heart o -tronic. Uh, If you set the heart o -tronic, uh, to adjust, to tell you when the product's ready, you'll have perfect vanilla, but your uh, mango ice, you're gonna have to come back and turn it back on again. It's not nearly the higher the sugar content of a product, the longer it takes to freeze. Uh, haagen ice cream is high in fat and low in sugar. Italian ice is high in sugar and no fat. Um, and we also get all the great buzzwords. Uh, sodium free, cholesterol free. Uh, you know, it's, it sounds like the greatest stuff since beer. And uh, it's, it's an easy sell product. There was another question? Uh, the question is, can you add real fruit into this? Uh, will it change the formula? No, uh, I have a lot of customers who do that, who uh, say on a strawberry, they'll use Rod's strawberry base, because if you eat a strawberry, if you can find a good one, which is hard to do, uh, they're kind of bland. Uh, so you have to use an awful lot of them, like four pounds or so, quite a lot. If you use a base, uh, you can then add the strawberries so that you get uh, you know, the pieces in there and, and the character and the looks of it. So it's a nice way to, you know, dress up, dress up the product. So and there's different ways to handle uh, fruits when, when putting them in the finished product. So if you're doing an Italian ice and you want to add strawberry into your strawberry ice, you can get a frozen fruit and add that right into the machine. Okay, because uh, the, the, the ice is, is water and sugar and there's a lot of water and sugar in, in this, the strawberry. So it's not going to affect the profile of the finished product. But if, you add, you, if you're making an ice cream or gelato, you don't want to add frozen fruit into the ice cream, especially into the batch machine, and you don't want to fold in a frozen fruit. You want to use a, a process, stabilized process product that someone like iRice would make or other manufacturers, or you want to take strawberries and soak them in a the sugar water. The reason for this is uh, there is a lot of free moisture in fruit, especially strawberries. When you add strawberries or other fruit to an ice cream or a gelato, when the product freezes, you'll get a, a hard, frozen piece of fruit. And you may notice this in, say, even briars. You know, if, you, if you eat a strawberry ice cream for briars, you'll, you'll bite into that. It's a hard piece of fruit. If you use a stabilized uh, fruit or one that you process with sugar, that pr the fruit draws in the sugar, so you'll get a nice, soft bite out of it. The other thing is, if you use a frozen or fresh fruit, you'll get a crystallization around the ice cream. You may notice that sometimes in people's ice cream. That's because they just use that frozen or fresh piece. So be sure when you're making ice cream or 
uh, gelato that you use a stabilized or, or a fruit that you process with your own sugar. That'll keep the crystallization from occurring in the finished ice cream and also give you a nice soft bite in your fruit. I, I hope you're hearing what Rod's saying uh, in that Rod manufactures and sells ice cream flavors and the Italian ice flavors. And at the same time, he's telling you the way that I often do it, using uh, products from the supermarket. And in your business, you're probably going to do both. You can do my way uh, on many products, not all of them, but on many products. If you're an individual store and you're going to see 200 people and you're able to control the environment. But what happens when you get big and all of a sudden someone says, can you supply Italian ice to Yankee Stadium? You know, you can't hire enough people to be sitting there chopping strawberries all day long. So uh, both methods uh, work very well. And I do, in Italian ice, uh, three different methods. I use, uh, I, I might make a blueberry with uh, fresh blueberries when they're in season. Um, when they're out of season, I'll use Rod's blueberry base because I gotta ha keep having the flavor. And if I was in uh, Istanbul and could not ship the product in, uh, Rod makes a blueberry extract. Uh, you've used extracts before. Uh, when you bake a cake, if you make a vanilla cake, you're putting in vanilla extract. Well, we have over here um, bubble gum. Let's see. Yeah, here's I rice bubble gum flavor. You know, maybe you'd like to make bubble gum Italian ice all natural, but I've yet to see a bubble gum tree growing here in Florida. But kids like bubble gum. So you use an extract just like you would in a birthday cake. And so it's sugar, water, or, and, and uh, bubble gum, or uh, sugar in the stableese, and uh, water, and the bubble gum. So there are different ways to come to different approaches. And oftentimes, your decision comes down to uh, who's my market and where is it. Uh, if, I guarantee if you're doing Yankee Stadium, uh, they want something cold, and they want it fast. They want thousands of gallons of it. So uh, do look and listen to all methods that there are. So this afternoon we're going to make a lemon ice using a lemon emulsion, which is similar to a bubble gum flavor. A bubble gum that could be an emulsion or a flavor. Uh, so when we make this lemon, you could actually just substitute the bubble gum and have a bubble gum ice as opposed to a lemon ice. But there are, there are different types of flavor systems you know, we just use this lemon, this uh, mango base. So there's some mango juice in here, there's mango flavor, there's sweetener, there's color, etc. This, uh, this base, although it was developed initially to make uh, Italian ices, any of these water ice bases that I rice manufactures can be used to flavor ice cream also, or gelato. These are just flavor systems. Uses levels. Uh, and ice cream is approximately 12% uh, by weight, which is about 32 ounces to two and a half gallons of mix. Uh, but so any of these water ice bases are flavor systems that can be used to flavor anything, but especially frozen, other frozen desserts. Okay? You might catch, catch that Rod calls it water ice. Uh, I call it Italian ice. Uh, it has different names. In New York, it's always Italian ice. It's so Italian ice that if you order a cherry, Italian ice, uh, we say, give me a cherry lemon ice, because lemon is the, the, the mainstay. Or give me a chocolate lemon ice. It's, it's known as lemon ice. And this, is, this is a great point that Steve makes. Uh, they have so many different names, but the important thing to remember about ices is that they're all non-dairy frozen desserts. Okay? So non-dairy frozen desserts encompass Italian ice, Philadelphia ice, water ice, tub slush, sorbet. And, sor and sorbetto. Sorbet. sorbet and sorbetto. Yes. So sorbet and sorbetto is nothing but an Italian ice. There is no legal standard of identity for sorbet versus ice. However, there is a perceived notion that sorbet is a higher quality product than ice. So there's a, and the perfect example is that there's a there's a large manufacturer in New York City that has a storefront, and their, their menu shows ra raspberry sorbet, raspberry ice. For the sorbet, they get $7 for a four ounce <laughs> cup. For the ice, they get $3.50. It's the exact same product, manufactured the exact same way, 
but because of the perceived notion that sorbet is higher quality, they get more money for that exact same product. And it's the presentation. You've never seen that before, have you, Steve? All the time. All the time. Uh, let's see. I don't know where my cup... Here it is. Um, well, we're pretty but, close. Yeah, we are. Here's exactly what Rod's talking about. We sell Italian ice in New York in a squeeze cup. Uh, that's a... And if you ask your paper supplier for a squeeze cup, he'll never... Deer in the headlights. Um, it's a pleated water cup, like the water cooler over there, and a lady's dress is pleated. Do you want to pull that? Is it ready? Let me get you a tub. Um, we you sell it in a squeeze cup. Oh, I'm going to use these. I have a tub right here, so... Oh, that's fine. Is there, now, a, lock? Is there a lock on this? No, it's just uh, cold. How's that look? It does. It's great. Okay. Now, if you'll stand to the side so the camera can see it. Rod's ready to pull this out. We're going to turn off the refrigeration. So at this level, you have a product that's basically soft mashed potatoes. Open it all the way. Look how fast that comes out. Isn't that beautiful? Now, here's what Rod was talking about. This is an Italian ice. We, we do by squeezer. That's a sorbet. <laughs> the only difference is the price and the presentation. Mm. If you're doing a fair, oh, that's good. If you're doing a, we'll let you have some. Are you stopping this? Yeah. If you're doing a fair down here in Florida, we have lots of rodeos and, and Ferris wheels and stuff like that. You're selling mango, cherry, grape, orange, chocolate. If you go to a art festival, you know, the arts and crafts crowd, now the same product is mango, kiwi, papaya, apricot. It's, it's still Italian ice, but a little more upscale flavors. Mmm. Why don't you all come up, and we'll give you some of this. In fact, all you want. All you want. <laughs> Let me... Uh, so mango is the number one seller for ices. It probably sells 10 to 1 over any other flavor out there. And that's on a national level. Sammy, come here girl.